everybody, welcome back to E Cubed. Today, a very fun expression. Before we get there, I need to thank my new patrons. So thank you goes to Mauricio Romero and another Mauricio, Mauricio Cantal. I hope my pronunciation was okay, gentlemen. And also to Detlef Bernard. I hope my pronunciation is okay. We also have Yessi. Yessi, thank you very much. And uh, Hiroko Shido. Thank you so much for being my patrons. Now, some people are donating a thousand. No, nobody's donating a thousand dollars. But uh, a dollar means so much, and many of you are giving more than a dollar, much more than a dollar, uh, and it really helps so much, it helps pay the rent. This month, I don't have to worry about the rent, so once again, thanks so much. Okay, today's expression um, is a great expression. It, it, it's, but no, but no, and that's how you need to say it. If you're a lady, but no, that's how you need to say it. Now, uh, you guys, some of you follow me on Twitter, right? My Twitter handle is at Coach Shane. Well, some of you might know my web bear. Uh, he takes care of so much stuff. Um, he also has a, a Twitter channel. And it's called Critter Thoughts. And, well, him being a bear, uh, he understands how animals think. And uh, he, uh, every day, he, he tries to upload a picture and uh, his thoughts. If you follow me, then I also recommend that you follow uh, Parmi Smarmy. His Critter Thoughts are, are, are brilliant. I really like them, uh, and very clever, and a great place to learn English with a picture. You can see the picture and read the description, and maybe you can understand. Sometimes it's difficult, but today's was, was great. Um, he's, he's ironing, and he says something like, I could have been a museum bear, but no. And what this means is, if my life had been normal, or proper, or decent, then I could have been a museum bear. And I guess a museum bear is a bear who sits in a museum and is very nice looking and everybody loves him. But no, we see him ironing pants. I think they're pants. He's a slave. He's like Cinderella. He could have been the, the beauty of the ball. But no, he's slaving at home, ironing the pants of somebody. I have no idea. No, not my pants. I do not iron pants. I don't even have an iron. So, but no is a great expression. I'll give you an example. When I was young, my neighbor, I'm going to say his name, John Semenchuk. Yeah, he was, he was okay. Sometimes he was not okay. But John Semenchuk, his dad was a big guy. Uh, physically a big guy, and in our town he was a big guy. They were like the rich family. Their, their entire family had cars. That was uh, John, his two older sisters, mom, dad. They had five cars. They had boats, and they had everything. And he had, you know, Nintendo. This is a long time ago when Nintendo was really expensive. He had everything. Everything. I could have been born into John's family, but no. I could have had a life like him if I had been born into his family. But no, I was born into my family, and my dad was tough. He wouldn't buy me Nintendo nothing. Now, I wouldn't 
trade my dad for anybody. But when I was young, I was a little bit jealous. Uh, another situation. I could have been a Wall Street banker, but no. And the idea is, my plans were to go to business school and study accounting and become a business person. But my mother told me, no, Shane, I want you to study something more international, something, something that you would enjoy. So I took my mom's advice, and, and now I'm nothing. Well, no, no, I'm an English coach, and I'm your English coach. But if I had not listened to my mom's advice, I could have been something else. I could have been a Wall Street banker, but no. Now remember, when we say, but no, we're very disappointed. We're not happy at all. Okay? All right, check out this dialogue. Want some more vegetables? No. I could have been having a barbecue, but no. Quit complaining. The rain is nice. I wanted hamburgers. Yeah, that was me when I was a young kid. If I had the choice of hamburgers cooked in a barbecue grill, or vegetables cooked by mom on the stove. Get out of here, vegetables. Give me the hamburgers. But if you're going to cook on a barbecue grill, we didn't have a covered grill. Our grill was open. If it rained, no barbecue. And that happened a lot when I was young. Every Friday, every Saturday, usually we'd have a barbecue. But if it rained, no barbecue, no hamburgers. Life was terrible. I had to eat vegetables. When you eat hamburgers, there are no vegetables. There's french fries and hamburgers. That's it. Good stuff. But it rained, but no. No good stuff today. A lot of American people went to South America, to Brazil, and this is 2014, they bought World Cup tickets for the U.S. soccer team, and they could still be there celebrating, watching the U.S. team, but no, the U.S. goalkeeper, he blocked 16 goals. Did they win? No. <sighs> Sorry, I'm a little disappointed in Team USA. Actually, the goalkeeper did great. The team did pretty good. Belgium was tough. What's going to happen? What is going to happen? That is the question. Going to be pretty exciting. Your team could have been there, but no, they had to lose. They had to make a mistake. The coach was stupid. The player was dumb. What's your excuse? What's your disappointment? Can you make an example with, but no, if you can, leave it down below. That's today's expression. You guys have a great one, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Want some more vegetables? No. I could have been having a barbecue, but no. Quit complaining. The rain is nice. I wanted hamburgers. Want some more vegetables? No. I could have been having a barbecue, but no. Quit complaining. The rain is nice. I wanted hamburgers. Want some more vegetables? No. I could have been having a barbecue, but no. Quit complaining. The rain is nice. I wanted hamburgers.